Hey guys, in this video, we're going to answer a very popular question. What kind of bike storage are you guys using and why did you choose that setup? We've been carrying a couple of e-bikes with us on the road and we've been carrying them in this location above the bed of our pickup truck, Seymour. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the issues you confront when you're trying to carry bicycles and especially electric bicycles with you on the road if you have a towable RV. Okay. Put it in the front thingy first. Oh yeah. First consideration is the weight of your bicycles. These e-bikes weigh around 48 pounds and they are relatively lightweight e-bikes. Battery, which usually fits here, weighs seven pounds. We usually remove the batteries when we're transporting the bikes. But when you're getting to around 50 pounds, it's a lot of weight to lift. It's also a lot of weight for a bike rack to hold. So that brings us to the next point. A lot of people have asked, why don't you just mount them on the back of your trailer? So there are several reasons why we did not choose to put a bike rack on the rear of our Airstream. Airstream does make a specific bike rack that's fabricated for Airstream, but it didn't work for what we needed. And there are a few reasons why. One, our bikes weighed more than the max weight allowed by that bike rack. That bike rack only is rated up to 75 pounds. And both of our bikes on the rack at the same time would have exceeded that. Two, once that bike rack is installed while the bikes are on it, or if it's folded up, it would block this window from opening. And this window is our emergency exit window in case we needed to get out of the rear of our Airstream if there was a fire or something else that happened where we need to make a quick escape. This is it, and I don't want that blocked because I don't want to get caught in a fire personally. The other thing is, when that rack is being used, it blocks this rear drawer from being opened. We keep only one thing in that rear drawer and it is our sewer hose. <laughs> so we want to be able to access that at all times and we don't want to have to take the bikes off every time we need to get to that drawer. So those three things are the reason why we said no to the Airstream bike rack. Another place you could mount your bikes would be in that space between your tow vehicle and the trailer. I'm talking about this area. And we do see some people that have configured mounts in this space, but there are a couple of obvious downsides to that. First and foremost, propano. This is where we have to go to access our propane tanks. And I personally just didn't really want to have to worry about having those bikes back there every time we tried to get to the propane. The other issue will be if our rig is hitched and there are bikes somewhere between the trailer and the pickup truck, well, we carry some things in the bed of our truck, for example, a generator, and I want to be able to fold down the tailgate of our truck and obviously I couldn't do that if we had a bunch of bikes occupying this space. What about the front of the truck, you ask? Yes, occasionally we might see some people that configure some sort of bike mount on the very front of their vehicle. I personally did not want that. I mean, I didn't want to be driving down the interstate, having our bikes somehow attached to the front of Seymour. Those bikes are going to get blasted with every bug we encounter across North America and I just did not really like that as a solution. Another possible solution would be on the roof of our truck. You do see some people that figure out a way to mount them on the roof. Again, that's a pretty high distance to lift 50 pounds. I could do it, but to me, it's just kind of an awkward solution. So I think this is kind of like a political election where you hold your nose and you pick the best of a bunch of bad choices. And it's a really nice setup. I don't love it for a couple of different reasons I'm going to explain. So what we have here is a rack storage system by Yakima and that big bulbous black storage unit on the opposite of it is by a company called Thule. We went with two different companies, mainly on the recommendation of the bike shop where we made these purchases. 
we went to a bike shop, spoke to some experts, really researched some different options, and we said we want the best available. I have here a list of all the different components that went into making our bike storage system. Key things to know, uh, the tonneau cover is by a company called Retrax, and this is the XR series Pro model, I believe, and it includes this side channel on each side of the truck that allows you to mount these sort of storage options. Now our actual bike storage uh, is by Yakima and it is resting on top of two crossbars that are also by Yakima. So you have to buy all these different components separately and kind of piece together the system that suits what you need. But you buy these different towers to so the towers, attach the crossbars, and on top of the crossbars, you can build any kind of storage solution you want. You could put a couple of the Thule storage units, for example. You could mount probably four or five bikes across the bed of your truck. Or you could just put a platform down, and some people actually put tents on top of the rear of their truck, which would be a different form of RV travel, I guess. But these bike storage units are called the Yakima High Speed Premium Rooftop Fork Bike Mount. The reason they're called fork bike mounts is because we mount them using the front fork of our bicycle. You see there's a metal rod called a skewer that fits inside the front fork of the bicycle. So anytime the bikes are going into storage, we have to take off the front tire of the bike which just takes a couple of minutes, but it's one other thing that slows you down. Here you see the so-called skewer. These tighten on to the front fork of your bike and they do have a lock at the end. And I will point out that all these different Yakima locks are keyed to the same lock or locked to the same key. <laughs> so you really only need one key to open up all the different Yakima stuff. So I do appreciate that just from a, a usability standpoint. But we were assured by the experts at the bike store that this front fork storage is the most stable you can get, that those bikes stay planted when they are locked into place. And you see, you can lock them on the front. Uh, you sort of just tighten this little knob down it locks onto that front fork and then you can actually lock the bike into place here. And then the rear tire of the bike is simply strapped into place by locking in this strap. So the main point here is it's customized to what we needed with regard to our bikes, our e-bikes, their certain weight and the size of their tires. And I will leave a list of all these different components in the description beneath this video if you want to go in and check them out. First of all, the Yakima bars solve the weight issue. These things can hold several hundred pounds. So, I mean, in theory, you could put a platform on top of these bars and you could mount a generator. Now, if you had an accident, that generator might go flying through the cab of your truck, killing everyone on board. So I wouldn't really recommend you do that, but I'm just saying, they can support a lot of weight. So we didn't have to worry about the e-bike weight issue. Secondly, you know, it's really not that far to lift the bikes off the ground. I mean, one person can do it. I can mount and take off these bikes by myself without assistance. Although it's always helpful if I have assistance. <laughs> We've driven our truck across some very rough, bumpy roads in Wyoming and South Dakota, New Mexico and Arizona. There have been a couple of times when they have wiggled a little far to one side or another and we've had to stop and get out and reconfigure them. These little bars that attach to the fork of your bike, they can loosen as you ride down the road. So you have to sort of check them periodically and sometimes it can be hard to get them tight enough to keep your bike from bouncing too much. You want a little bit of give but you don't want too much give. And we've had two instances where we had too much give and we didn't realize it and we hit a big pothole and this came loose on one side from this bar. And when it did that, it fell 
over. Didn't fall completely off. It was still attached to the truck, but it fell enough to where this bike pedal hit the side of the truck. So this is a scratch and a slight dent that this bike pedal made when it fell. The other time it happened, it fell the other way and it scratched our Thule box over there. The setup is overall quite secure. I'm not convinced it isn't hard on the front of the bike and that's from where the fork attaches to this bar and clamp assembly. We had a catastrophic problem with Christie's bike in which the front fork tip broke and it was after bouncing up and down on a lot of roads. Whether this is reflective on the storage system or on the bike and the bike fork, you can debate. I do believe we can replace this fork. I'm sure we or a bike shop can repair that damage, but the fact is the damage happened and it rendered the bike pretty much unusable until we get some serious repairs done. So what I like about the system, overall I think it's the best of a bunch of bad options. What I don't like about the system. When we have this in place, it really hinders access to the bed of the truck. It's a trade-off. In exchange for getting this storage above the bed, uh, this storage within the bed of the truck is much harder to access. But you can see, if I need to access something that's sort of up against the cab of the truck, I can no longer just go to one side and reach in and pull it out the way that I could for years without this kind of storage on top. So yes, we have retained the storage in the bed of the truck, but it's become much less accessible. I like the Thule storage unit very much. And somebody out there is gonna say, you've got your Thule on backwards. That's an option that you have because these things open to either side. And so we mounted the Thule in the manner that seemed to be the most aerodynamic <laughs> with it sort of sloping off the back. And I love being able to store all of our RV clutter here because it makes for very quick access for things like wheel chocks and leveling blocks, the water hose, all those sort of necessities of a campsite. Instead of digging around inside the bed of the truck to pop them out, I can just pop this thing open, lift and get whatever I need. It does restrict some of my visibility out of the back. So when we're driving it, you have to become much more reliant on your side mirrors. But frankly, if you're towing, that's not a big deal anyway, because you're not gonna see much out of your rear view mirror, except a big fat trailer behind you. Now, if we are off the road and not towing, then I'm sort of inclined to take this stuff off. And something I really like about this Yakima setup, a couple of key turns, and this thing will pop and lift right off. Now it is a two person job pretty much getting this apparatus off the truck, but it's not that big a deal. Once you do that, you've got your old pickup truck back again. And you know, of course we still have the hard tonneau cover. So that just becomes a giant lockable trunk. Pieced together, not including the tonneau cover, but the Yakima bars and Thule set up. I and mean, this was about a $2,000 purchase. And nobody sponsored this video. Like 99.9% .9 of our videos, there was no sponsor. And we bought this stuff just trying to get the best stuff that we could find. So I'm satisfied with it because it was the best of a bunch of bad options. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. It uh, doesn't mean that I love it. I just haven't seen anything any better. I'm sort of reaching a conclusion that the more barriers you put between yourself and actually using that bike, the less likely you're going to use the bike. So I think whatever type of bike storage solution you choose, it needs to be something that's conducive to you grabbing the bike and going. And actually, I think that's been an issue for us with this one, because in order to mount the bikes, you have to take the front wheel off, right? And you have to attach that little bar on the front of the bike that attaches to the clamp on the bike mount. 
Well, removing the front tire of your bike and putting it back on is one additional step. And with these e-bikes, you have another step of attaching the battery and locking it into place. So you end up needing to scramble and find a bunch of different keys. You need a Yakima key to detach your bike. You need a key for your bike lock. You need a key for your bike battery. And frankly, it's just a lot of stuff to keep up with. If you're really passionate about biking, that's no big deal to you. If you're just looking to add some e-bikes to your RV travel experience, I think you just need to think that through. Every additional step that you have to take to use the bike is going to restrict or prevent or discourage you from using them when you're actually out there on the road. So I wish we had a setup where we could just keep our tires on our bike and even keep the battery attached and just grab it and go, but we haven't found that yet. And I will say, not only did the front fork of Christie's bike break, but my bike is showing some weather damage on the LCD display. Some water has gotten into that display. Whether or not that will permanently damage the display, I don't know but obviously the bikes are exposed to the elements when they're riding around on top of the truck. They're getting beaten down by the sun, beaten down by rain or snow on them this year. Yes, we've tried putting covers on the bikes and we haven't really found a good solution to cover the bikes because those covers really flap around and want to come loose. Sorry guys, that's a look at our e-bike storage solution by Yakima. Now, if you have a different type of RV, if you have a fifth wheel or a motorhome, you may have many more storage options than we have. We not only have a travel trailer, we have an Airstream. We really are always very, very cautious about doing anything to damage the aluminum in our trailer. There's really no underneath storage. So we're pretty limited in our storage options. And this big space was the best that we could do. We're interested in hearing from you. If you've come up with a clever or unique or just a satisfactory bicycle storage solution for you and your RV, post a comment, let us know what you're using. We'll put links to all this stuff that we're using in the description beneath this video. And you can go in and check it out for yourself and see if it might work for you and your setup. Until next time, as always, thank you for tuning in. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe. And you know what we say here when we say goodbye, we say hang loose. I mean, Lolo. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.